Okay, we're recording. Um, Josh, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, so my name's Josh, and um, I am first and foremost uh, a father. I have two kids. One is a stepson. His name is Joey. And uh, a daughter who's just turned four yesterday named Siora. And uh, and I'm a husband. I'm a cousin. I'm a friend. I'm, um, and I think those are the things that are important. And then I'm a musician and um, an educator here in Denver. Cool. Thank you very much for that yeah. introduction. I think it's really interesting that um, you've just put um, family first. And I think I know you as someone who's um, always been community oriented. Um, and um, um, and I, I wouldn't have expected that, you know, um, folks who are um, in the community, like, um, th with their careers and their jobs and the things they're doing, like I'm a musician or I'm a poet or I'm a teacher or whatever. Yeah. Folks become very attached to those, um, to those labels, I guess, mm -hmm. not labels, but those, you know, sure. those, those pieces of identity. So, yeah. um, was, was it always like that for you? Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think in the last, uh, decade, my life has changed pretty, pretty dramatically, um, for, for the best, I think. Um, I, um, yeah, I would say for the best, I, I think us as humans, I think we, we strive to hopefully get better. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if that's the case for some people, but I think we always strive at least, I, I think coming from an education background of, of always, you know, of being a teacher that it's, how can I get better? Yeah. Um, and so uh, I think things align, um, when you ask yourself that question and um, things that are meant to be hopefully become. And uh, yeah. And so I'm just, I guess I'm just super lucky to have um, great kids and a great family. And um, those are the things that give me the the energy and inspiration to do some of the other items. So yeah, um, yeah it's, some, it's like a Renaissance in a lot of ways in the last 10 years for me. I can take that. I mm -hmm. think, I, I know not to shine it on me, but I, I'm realizing that too. I'm a person who's always run away from family and run away from communities um, because there was a lot of pain and stuff there. And um, I'm finding now, like finally, like places where I fit more and like, um, and like there's like that mutual support there, um, like in my creative community and also in, um, my even uh, more personal community as well. Um, so I'm starting to see that uh, I'm a late bloomer <laughs> in a lot of things. Um, so that's really cool that you got yeah. that fairly early on, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and it's never, you know, it's, I'm not at any point of arrival. But yeah. I'm, I'm still like figuring things out as far as like my identity and what that means in the sense of like how I fit into the community, even into my family. I think yeah. it's a, it's a constant, um, it's very fluid, I think yeah. in, in our roles because people get older. Like my, my son is like becoming a teenager. So our relationship changes. And yeah. um, I think that's just a constant flux. Do you ever find that there's some, um, some kind of discomfort with the way um, um, outer community views you and your your accomplishments and whatnot versus who you are constantly becoming, if that makes sense. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> I think those that know me personally um, see, see the connection. And then those that don't know me personally, um, they maybe don't know as much about the inside. So I don't know if there is a disconnect then, but um, I just been learning so much through, and this is going to sound crazy, but I've been learning a lot through social media and, and having so many uh, amazing uh, idols in my life that I've always looked up to musically and educationally. And social media has given us that opportunity to see what's behind the curtain yeah. and to see like, Oh, you don't have to be like this, like, you know, really lonely musician. Like you can have a family, you can have friends, you can, you know you can go to the park like i always saw some of my artists as like these like very lonely cold individuals because that's what they were marketed as yeah and there was no insight to their life and even the interviews were pretty cold and <laughs> lonely but as uh, you know i think social media has given us like a, a human view in some ways of like what else is behind the curtain and it's 
I think it's freed me to to be more myself in that sense, to be a family person or to, yeah. you know, have those closer than be and be proud of those things. Absolutely. Um, I, I agree with the social media. I know when social media, like when way back when Facebook started, whenever that was 2006, 2007, some, some friends were like, you need to get on here, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, <laughs> Heck no. And I'm all over it now. And that's exactly why it's like, they're like, um, there's this singer um, who I love who's done some work and some major films and like just mm-hmm. does some amazing like, sound engineering and um, uh, just is also really sweet and spiritually aware. And um, just some, somehow we became friends, um, you know, on social media. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a project I was trying to do where I was trying to like trade vocal lines with people. Oh. Um, she was the only one who traded with me oh. and we did it for a while and it was like it was really really cool and then and then i like got nervous and whatever and then stopped but like <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm sure if i reached out again with another line she would send one and um you know that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for social media i just right. so i always like hearing when people are like no there's actually good things that we that happen here that are very very yeah. va- valuable right very few positive things i think <laughs> but that's one of them that's one of them that i've i've loved to see is like um because some of the music that i, I make and listen to um yeah i don't some people may not see it as so like joyous and <laughs> poppy or happy but and sometimes that that aesthetic is tied to the person and so we just have this like view that they're they they look and live a life as they sound in their music yeah. and and then you're like, oh no, they actually like garden and they, you know, they go to the park, they go to the store. I, oh, look at this picture. This is cool. Like, I don't know. I've always en- enjoyed that process of like for me in my journey to see some of those people that I've loved so much growing up to see them living these lives. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm glad that you found that. I think a lot of people don't, and I always wonder what they're doing. Because, <laughs> um, like, I don't know, for me, that was always the intent, was to connect and share mm-hmm. on social media. Um, and there's so many, there's so much amazingness and beauty happening. Um, there's a lot of terribleness, too. <laughs> um, oh, and um, it's really easy for that to be amplified on social media, but, mm-hmm. like, the other stuff can be amplified too, you know, and also yeah, sure. like help, you know, we need yeah. a bomb sometimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> we need a break or something. It's true. Um, I don't know. Do you garden? <laughs> I can, I can well, imagine you have time. <laughs> actually, well, it's funny. Um, no, I don't. And I, <laughs> so I just moved into the west side of town. Um, I'm in Valverde, um, Athmar Park. Um, area so just like off of Alameda and like Tejon over by uh, Belverde Elementary yeah and there's some amazing like gardeners like in my neighborhood and I'm the like the really bad homeowner that's like I just hate to come outside my house because people <laughs> I feel like they're shaking their heads and judging me I'm like yeah they're, I, that yes that that weed is still there and I still haven't pulled it like I'm just seeing how big it's gonna get I'm surprised I haven't gotten a ticket from the city I should get one I really should get a couple well maybe it's a useful weed yeah maybe, maybe it is maybe it's fueling somebody's life or you know uh, some insect's life I have no idea but <laughs> but it's pretty bad it's pretty, I'm a bad I'm a bad homeowner but yeah anyways so I, I should garden though. I, I, I've, I've been very inspired by those on social media that have like taken the COVID, you know, opportunity yeah. to, you know, grow their own food and to really like take that step towards that um, self wellness and self ownership of like um, their diets. And I'm like yeah. super jealous. I'm going to be one of those people that's going to be like hitting people up for extra food when and- it all goes down. That's the cool thing about gardening is like, if you start gardening, I learned this this year because um, I live in a basement and I asked my friends for low light plants that could live in a basement. Mm. They brought me vegetable plants and seeds. Oh. To, like vegetable seeds. And yeah, I was like, uh, what the heck? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just like, this isn't. Yeah. 
so this is a part-time job like yeah. this is a lot of responsibility and so i was it real is. mad i was really mad at first and i didn't yeah. come outside at all so i was trying to grow everything in my windows mm -hmm. and things got too big and so oh. i had to plant stuff outside and then suddenly i had a garden so oh my gosh this is my first garden and like i just took a bag of stuff to someone's house yeah. Um, and that's what happens like um gardening usually produces like more than you need right um, yeah and it's it's just um for me i mean i've been in denver for 20 years and i feel like it's um like the idea of community for me has been really rough i feel like in, in a lot of ways i've given more in a lot of situations like mm -hmm. giving giving given but haven't gotten much back sure but then i but then i had my first garden and like people are bringing vegetables, they're bringing plants and seeds. Yeah. And, um, and then I'm able to give back, you know, and, um, and it's really fun. And it's like, it's not that it's not effortless because it's like constant work, but not hard work necessarily. I mean, it, sure. depends, it depends on the size of your garden, but like, right. you know, like before the snow, I went and helped some folks harvest some stuff uh -huh. um, for their community garden. And yeah. um, it was, I don't know, it's just that really showed me what what good community feels like yeah um, that's a good uh, analogy too i think um the way that you said it to like mm -hmm. how much you give in, into someone how much you get back and um yeah and it's not that we give to ex with expe expectation right but, right a, a, maybe a little though right <laughs> or at least <laughs> at least some curiosity about like or you know, I, I said good morning. Are you gonna say good morning back? Or you know maybe? that kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Well, another good lesson for me is like um giving from an overflowing cup. So like um adhesion cohesion is a good lesson you learn mm. in eighth grade science class, right? Yes. Um and there's some on the top that you know whoosh, mm. that's extra. Yes. Yeah. Um and then there's whatever is extra you can actually give. But I was giving to almost empty to empty. Mm. Um so that's not um, good yeah i didn't know yeah. <laughs> yeah i didn't know until i was tired and i was like you know what adhesion cohesion's my friend. well i i guess i mean i have a question then too like now that we're kind of going into community discussion is you know what what are some ways i think that people maybe don't know of some things that you've given to the community that you feel like uh, they should know i don't know i don't feel like i'm owed anything because i go into things to learn um I think I have a lot of regrets in music um, mm. because I've had a lot of, it's been really hard and um, I've learned about like um, how to be a good community member and mm. how, where, where I can be supported as well mm -hmm. um, over time. And it has taken me this long. Yeah. Um, so um, I did used to have a lot of grit in my teeth about, um like why isn't anyone seeing me right um mm -hmm. and um just there's you know every community like has its favorites and stuff like that and that used to bother me but like i've made like some major shifts of my own it's like who is my work for am i doing this work for other people yeah honestly especially my writing i'm doing it for myself for my own healing and right. if other people are interested in it then they are um so it's like that's been a major shift over like the last five or eight years or so yeah yeah um and then um but for the rest of my life i'm like why isn't anyone seeing me you know yeah um and so that that was really really hard and um there are just i just feel like there are a lot of messages that i wish i would have received sooner like especially like with music like mm. you know often it's very difficult like um you know like yeah. i mean I, I, I've i gotten paid everything from a pat on the back to like $400 for a gig or something. So it's sure. like, or like a couple thousand dollars scholarship for a gig or something. Yeah, so yeah. It's just like, it, it varies so much um, mm -hmm. because people value it differently. And frankly, I mean, even venues are struggling. They were struggling before COVID. So it's yeah. like, there's like all these things and all the things in between. And then also like, you know, I was coming from this place of wanting to be seen. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't coming from a place of necessarily honing my craft. I was like actually kind of leapfrog. I was having this conversation with someone yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was trying to leapfrog it, you know. Um, and so, you know, a working musician will play anything, right? Yeah. Um, uh, um, unless they're really lucky and get to play 
whatever. Yeah. Um, but most of the working musicians I know, they'll like, <laughs> like I'm in a polka band and I play it like this and that, you know, <laughs> like I've, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm playing some, uh, like one of my friends from when I was 17, um, we used to like poo poo on, uh, uh, what is it called? that slow ja cool jazz or whatever the smooth mm -hmm. jazz yeah um, we used to talk shit about it all the time and he's yeah. Like, yeah i even played some smooth jazz and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you know because it paid so right right oh and he had the jobs for it so like sure. um that's the thing you know i kind of didn't get those messages and as a vocalist mm. um i feel like even in education we're not taken as seriously unless we're um entering into like you know like classical music or something super um commercial and i really was fighting against that so mm -hmm. i like classical music yeah uh, but like yeah so i mean yeah that's a good question that's i mean that's pretty much i don't i don't feel like i'm owed anything because i feel like especially with covid like mm -hmm. i don't know how much time we have Right. Um, and I'm in my mid forties now. I don't know how much time I have yeah. and, um, what, what do I want to do? And, you know, the stuff that I feel that I need to do, um, and it's not necessarily to be seen. Um, but if someone publishes my book, I can teach in an MFA program. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you That's know, <laughs> nice. right. Right. yeah. Yeah. So well, I think you bring up some interesting things and, and I want to say like personally from like my, my lens is that, you are a pretty large contributor to our, our community in multiple sectors. And that's something that I've always loved about you since the moment I met you is you contribute, I think, first and foremost, like you lead with your heart. And I think that that's what makes a good community member. But the ways I think you've influenced um, the greater community is through obviously your music and your writing. Mm -hmm. And um, I also think your relationships with people and the joy that you bring. I mean, everybody that I've ever spoken with or heard your name mentioned has always been like very loving or very happy or like giving has even been used as well so I think from my lens from where I sit I I've always heard and seen and understood you to be this kind of a giant actually in our community <laughs> and so that's something I've always loved so much ab about you and um, you know and I think your contributions um to creative music to giving those individuals the light that sometimes don't get it i think you're such an advocate for bringing um what i think is like greatness to the light mm -hmm. um and so i think um maybe it's through your own experience of like having that feeling but you've been an advocate for others as well and i've learned actually a lot through like some of the reviews that you've written that I've read, I'm like, oh, I should check that out. Like, that sounds cool. Or, um, you know, just some of the things that you posted, I'm like, oh, I need to go check that out. Things I would have never known about. And then I'm like, whoa, like the community is now expanded. I I now see all these other people here and it's it's because of you. So I think, uh, you know, one, I, I, it's hard to see our reflection sometimes when we give a lot, but I, I want to be a reflection to you to tell you that I, I think you're very appreciated. Um, in the community, um, and you're very giving, so I appreciate you. Thank you for that. Um, thanks. Thank you for mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, I do um, work to, you know, there's a, there's a tendency in community, especially if you have anything that you want to be in community, to, like, kind of glom on to the community that we know, like our mm -hmm. immediate community, and then also the folks that um, are already shining. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that, um, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that at all, um, because I admire a lot of those folks, too. Um, and sometimes I'm really anxious, like I'm anxious to talk to them because I'm like a little fangirl, you know? Yeah. Um, but like I do, I mean, so like, you know, in my undergrad, I saw so many amazing writers and they're just sitting on their work, for example. Sure. Um, oh, yeah. And, and that's really frustrating to me. Mm -hmm. um, and um I am kind of the person who like throws the net out really wide. Um, mm -hmm. um, 
and part of it is because I've moved around so much and never really belonged to any one community. Um, so I've, I, I guess I was this way in high school too. Like I went mm. to all the friend groups during mm. lunch, yeah. but I never stayed with anyone. <laughs> um, and so yeah. you have a different view and you, you kind of like start seeing like, oh, these two groups are talking about this thing. What if y'all talk to each other? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have Good resources point. that the other one doesn't have. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think I've kind of always been that way. I'm just like really curious about stuff and can't sit. Still. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, it's, it's a Saturday morning and you are taking time to, to create, um, you know, this, this space here for us as people, as artists, as people in the community. And, and this was your doing, like you created mm -hmm. this and nobody told you to, <laughs> but I mean, I, I, it's something that I'm sure others appreciate. It's something I'm appreciating right now in the conversation. And, um, you know, I think this says a lot. So yeah, I don't know. I've always seen you as probably one of the, one of the giants of our community. Thanks for that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just do what I do. Um, yeah. but I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, are you and, getting? And, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to no, shine go it off of me now. <laughs> no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, are you getting to do any music right now at all? I am. I am. Yeah. You know, um, I, I was just thinking about this the other week was, well, what, what was the last gig I played? The last gig I played was um, like the last week of February with this country group called Ryan, Chris and the Rough Cuts. They're mm -hmm. like this really awesome country band. And we played this art museum that <laughs> we just did like Johnny Cash covers and tons of trumpet on all that. And that sounds this fun. Is, yeah, it was super cool. It was really fun. And I was just really starting to like build a relationship actually with, with that band. And then um, I went to go see Auntie Ballas at, um, <gasps> at summit. That was the last yeah. show I went to. <laughs> and it's a good show. <laughs> oh, it was a great show. <laughs> Had a fun, you know, fun night that and got to play my gig. And then literally it was like, hunker down time i was like what <laughs> <laughs> it sucks mm -hmm. but i will say that um it, it took it took about three three weeks before a lot of the gigs started to switch from live performances to recordings yeah so after about a month i started you know getting communication from people saying like hey like you want to record on this Do you want to record on that Do you want to do this project and and so it's kept me busy. The recording life has been extremely busy. Um, I probably on average spend maybe three, three or four hours um, a day recording oh, um, wow. or, or composing something mm -hmm. for the recording. But yeah, that's about average since for the last like few months. Yeah. So and it's you, been really good. You were prepared for this. Like you've had a home studio for a long while. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> this is, this is the funny part. Like, not knowing all this was coming, I started to invest a little bit more money because, okay, so small story. Kayla and Heffernan would always make fun of like my not having like proper gear. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, I can record it from home. She's like, do you still have a USB mic? I'm like, why are you, why are you talking like what? She's like, you can't use that. You got to get proper equipment. And she like just constantly just dog me. So I'm like, okay. So like one day I just like went to the store and I like got some gear and then I was like, okay, I probably should get some more stuff. Like, you, you know, it's like a really weird rabbit hole. You're like, hey, I think I need this. I don't know if I need this, but I'm going to buy it. And then COVID hit and I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad I did. Cause now I have all these tools. Yeah. Um, and now I'm dogging on Caitlin. Cause I'm like, Caitlin, you need to get proper monitors. Like you're using like a boom box for, for your, your listen back. That's not good. And she's like, this is my life now I'm DIY. And <laughs> so anyways, it, it was inspired actually by Caitlin to get my uh, recording life together. So I, nice. I, I'm in place now. <laughs> Do you feel like, uh, I, sometimes I feel like, like, um, things change so quickly. Some of your old recording equipment is moot. Mm. And then, and then what do you do? <laughs> I know. I know. It's, so dumb. it's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> it's and like, it's slow like, down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would say currently I feel good with like how my, my studio set up, but I know that that is going to change like tomorrow, <laughs> you know, everything just, it gets better and faster and, you know, 
to have a studio back in the day would have cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now you can do it for like a thousand dollars, you know? Yeah. It was pretty spectacular. Yeah. I remember when that started happening because yeah, we always went to other people's places and they had these decked out like whole halves of their houses that were dedicated to, you know, studio work. Um, Like there was this place in Boise that we went to and recorded some stuff and Mm -hmm. yeah it was all decked out or like you know they turned the basement into a studio or you know half a room or however it looks yeah yeah and all the equipment was huge like this huge chrome right (laughs) and now it's just like a laptop and like an audio interface and you're good and some headphones it's crazy yeah it's so crazy Mm -hmm. but no I, I think since COVID hit it's been really good um I've been working on stuff locally like with just friends and stuff and then um i've just been working on um some collaborations with folks in india that oh, i just met like kind of randomly um and then i don't know when he's going to release this but bart bardo martinez from chicano batman we've been working on some stuff together yeah. for the last few months and that's been a lot of fun to like get to know those guys and uh, we met, I met Chicano Batman when they were here last summer at the OMS and we just like hit it off and um, just found an alignment between like the way we hear and see music. And yeah. so we finally found some space and maybe COVID is part of that success again to be like, oh, maybe I should hit that dude up. So yeah, yeah, but it's been, it's been really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, how, how has teaching changed? Oh yeah. So there's that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I kind of want some points. Yeah, and I was going to ask you the same thing too. So, yeah. Um, so, so I'm an assistant principal at a Hill Campus of Arts and Sciences here in Denver. It's off of like sixth in Colorado, mm-hmm. and um, so it's grades six through eight. And COVID hit. It was like Friday the 13th or something like that. I think mm-hmm. it was the 15th, whatever. And you know we we've been home since and. It felt weird because the only time we ever do that is like a blizzard's coming. So it felt really weird. <laughs> um, but I would say in the spring, it was it was a horrible experience. It was really, really bad. Mm-hmm. Like just watching the inequities surface um, in our community from those that have and those don't that don't, it definitely showed um, having kids access internet in weird areas and or not at all. Um, it was just, it was really sad. And to see another group of kids to, you know, escape to like their second home in the mountains or, I mean, that's, it just wasn't fair to see. Um, But here we are again in the fall and we're still seeing similar things. It's a little bit better. Um, I think Denver Public Schools is doing a little bit better, but not, not great. Mm -hmm. Um, They could do better um, as far as just bridging those gaps for students. But I was just talking to my sister last night. I didn't even know this. So kids in Montbello that don't have Wi-Fi, they drive um, school buses to these neighborhoods and they open up their Wi-Fi in the bus uh-huh. so that the, so the houses can have it for kids. Wow. I did not know that they were doing this. So they drive the school bus, park it, open up their Wi-Fi, and then all the houses have it. Wow. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I thought, and that almost made me cry last night. I was like, oh my God, like, that's so cool, but yet, like, very sad still, like, that, you know, internet should be one of those things that should be, um, you know, should should be free. I, I That's my opinion on it. But it's been okay. Um, being a principal is, like, kind of hard in this setting because you have to think about all these families, and I think that's the most stressful part. Um and then on the other side, um, I work for the Laboratory of uh, Aerospace and Science Physics as a diversity and inclusion trainer. And yes. that's a different, <laughs> that's a whole different ball of wax. But I think because of what's happening with Black Lives Matter, um, I'm, I was really, I was really shocked. And, and I'm also surprised in a positive way to see places like LASP at CU Boulder that are wanting to begin to dismantle white supremacy and their practices and the way that they show up in the industry. And so um, they hired me as an affiliate um, about three months ago to start working with their staff on, on those specific things. So it's been really good. Um, I was going to ask you, given that, you know, you, you work in university settings, yeah. how, how have things changed or how have they um, shifted 
Well, I'm still a new professor. So like I am, this is pretty much my second year. Um, so I'm still on the steep learning curve um, and that part's really hard. Um, and then um, it, everything is, yeah, it's been waffly. Like you have to, like, so at Red Rocks, you have two classes maybe you have two classes maybe you'll have one class we're waiting to see um and then they open it up like you know yeah. very quickly before so i i didn't really prepare because i was like it's i had six students signed up i i was pretty sure i wouldn't have yeah. you know and then it tripled like overnight oh. and then oh, man. so i had that class and then i guess um i've done some good work in my writing life and um a bunch of um mentors and people i've worked with suggested me um for mines and um wow. they're like you know you'll have one class i'm like cool yeah i'll have one class because they pay a lot better than most places and um i um wasn't totally stoked about it because it's uh 70 face to face and um oh because the reason why i got it is because a lot of folks are taking care of their families mm -hmm. and things like that but i felt like i couldn't say no right sure, sure. and then they're like oh we have two classes for you i'm like oh great that's that's great that helps me out a lot and yeah. then um last minute um they're like do you want a third class i'm like i feel like i can't say no um and um i'm struggling <laughs> oh <laughs> it man me, it took me five weeks to just learn um the system um, oh yeah we're working in um and um all of the material is new to me um and i'm not complaining or anything i do i do love a good challenge and like i love learning um but it's very it is very stressful and it wears me out a lot and um it's also a little not fair for the students too you know who signed yeah. up for the class um and um you know and that all of that's very frustrating and unfortunately i'm not able to compartmentalize it and so mm -hmm. sometimes it does it often gets in the way of actual actually being able to yeah teach. sure um, sure so i'm just doing my best um and learning material um and um i mean that's that's really all i can do you know yeah so um, are you on in golden mm -hmm. oh my yep. god everyone's and masked up the whole campus so there's that um and i got five emails that five of my students are in quarantine right now so oh my gosh yeah um, oh that's intense <laughs> Oh my God. So it's just like, part of me is like, what did you do? And I was like, but I couldn't really say no. I wasn't really in a position to say no. Um, Cause yeah. you know, all my work dried up right. six, seven months ago. Um, and I needed to do something about that. So um, I can't keep asking friends to buy poetry <laughs> postcards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy so. some. Oh, well, yeah. I don't have time to do them right now. I actually, oh, never owe, mind. <laughs> I, yeah, I still owe three people a package from like, I don't know how long ago. So oh, gosh, <laughs> I want to make sure I fulfill those promises before yeah. I do that again. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's, I think it's interesting though. I think sometimes in, in moments of chaos, like now there's so many opportunities that could exist mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it's not the most ideal, but um I think I think it's I think it's great for you, um, but still there is that risk of like getting sick. There is that risk, and yeah. you know, and I definitely talk with people. I'm like, I need you to know, like, this is my situation. And yeah. some people are like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And some people right. are like, you know, um, so I do definitely have some folks that I hang out with who. Um, you know, are my regular peeps to hang out with. <laughs> yeah. 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 Man, that's, that's exciting though. So, I mean, I think what's good is that like after COVID's done and hopefully that'll, you know, whenever that happens, but yeah. your resume, you know, as you, I guess you move on or if you do move on to another, you know, institution that you've shown that you can do what you do in times of crisis too. So Oh, can I put that on my CV? <laughs> <laughs> you should. Crisis <laughs> educator right here. <laughs> you were you were talking about um diversity training, um, which is really interesting. I um um over the summer I got hired a few times, a couple of which were actually paid. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw the value in that work of like um being a sensitivity reader. Mm. Um and uh you know, helping people with some of those letters that came out about like, oh yeah, know, 
the in in response to BLM and, and right, uh, right. shootings, and um, that was that made me really nervous um, because often I'm put in situations where I'm the only person of color on yeah. staff yeah. or on a committee or something, and everyone defers to you for right. those things. Yeah. Um, but like, how? I guess like how how are you how how did you end up there and like how is it going? If uh, whatever yeah. parts you can talk about, I know. Sure. Yeah. No, I can talk about it. Um, well, um, I, I've worked in and out of CU for like the last I don't know fifteen years mm -hmm. of my life, and so um, when when the movement was picking up steam again, um, I wanted to do something, and I I wish I could protest. Like. Yeah. And but one thing that I'm grateful for is to, to see with Black Lives Matter is to see the youth um, on the front lines. Mm -hmm. Like there was one night I went to go grab some pho off of um, like Colfax and Grant right there, fanatic. I don't know if you've ever eaten that place is bomb. <laughs> and and I pull up and and um, like police were coming and uh, yeah. I, I looked at the who was on the front line of like the marchers and it was all like probably kids between like 17 to like 21. Wow. And I was like, wow, like that's so touchy, you know, and the, you know, and the, to go and do that during times of COVID, I'm like, that's mm -hmm. touching. And so I was like, I got to do something like, I know I can't be out there with them. Um, but what can I do? And so automatically thought about like, what, what platforms do I have? Mm -hmm. And one is, you know, education and navigating educational systems and so I saw that uh, LASP had a position open that just like they must have fired it off like as soon as all this was going down and mm -hmm. I applied. They canceled the job because of enrollment issues. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote back and I said, okay, I have a counter offer. I said, how about I consult with you? You don't have to bring me on full time, but we just do projects. And I said, okay, well that we can do. I said, okay, huh. cool. So they, they brought me in and um, it's small bites, I think, with some institutions like this, like thinking of like um, space science, like that's not at the top of their their thinking every day is like, am I, am I doing equitable work right now or am I showing up equitably in my workspace? And so right now we're just starting with like communication, like mm -hmm. how do you talk to people? Yeah. Like what kind of respect do you give and get and you know, how does that affect your work? And I think we start at the smallest molecules that we can. And then based on their comfort with me, we start to expand to, well, who, you know, when you talk to women or when you talk to, you know, people of color, like, how does that change? You know, then it's just mm -hmm. bubble up the other molecules and hopefully they stick. But right now we're, we're in those like early phases, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be part of it right now. I think, for um, for a company like LASP, which is like NASA, basically, to to take that step is huge, and so I commend them. Yeah. To be able to just jump in, so That's and I'm happy awesome. to be there with them. So yeah, it's been really cool. Um, you were saying you were working with, you know, some of the organizations on like their communication. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you read Tatter Covers. I did, and that was definitely an example. Um, you know, I mean, it, the the thing about that letter, and it's tricky saying this, is that they weren't wrong. Uh, well, they were wrong. They, I'm trying to figure out how to say it. The the thing that I I use that as an example, and I said the thing they're not doing is listening to the conversation that we're having having right now. Um, and I, I like to use like the latte method from Starbucks um, supervisor hand, <laughs> manual um, for um, these kinds of communications because I feel like the latte method is a PhD in communications. And that first like um, three steps has to do with the other party. And so we're listening and we're acknowledging and we're thanking before we make any other steps, right? So like, what are they saying? Yeah. And then we're like, oh my gosh, I hear you, right? And then thanking them for this information because it's new information. Mm. And then you take some kind of action. And that was what that letter didn't do. Mm. And that's what some organizations weren't doing either. They're like, well, this is where we stand. We, we have a track record of being a certain way or whatever, and people should know. I'm like, 
listen yeah. to what people are saying, right? <laughs> and um, and you gotta and and you have to if if I mean, why write the letter if you're gonna be that way? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why put yourself on the freaking radar? Uh, yeah. Your organization is gonna die. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the last part of latte method is like encourage some kind of action. Mm-hmm. And so in that case, it's just like. Um, these are the things that we aim to do in the future. And here are some resources. So encouraging their action as well, you know, mm. because obviously some of um, these communities um, uh, um, supporters are, you know, they don't see the reason why we should be having this conversation. Yeah. So, um, you know, you encourage yeah. them to um, step it up and do some education and stuff themselves. Right. Um, so yeah that was um one and i think also like poetry foundation their letter did something similar as tattered covers did Mm. yeah literary community was so disappointed oh wow so disappointed in what happened there yeah um you know and it's a big important organization and they didn't they didn't didn't listen or acknowledge they they think it's okay to be neutral you know or they did (laughs) right Um, yeah 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 um my gosh so it's just like, yeah. Um, and then, of course, an organization like that in the literary community that maybe has some issues with, you know, more equity and inclusivity and stuff. Um, you know, it it looks it just looks so bad. Yeah, it looks very very bad. Um, so, like, I was nervous because I know folks on the front line of like major movements. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know folks who do a lot of um, really deep equity work um, in government um, and like just about every kind of organization you can think of. Um, and so they're definitely more knowledgeable about the, um, you know, inner workings and how to talk with people and stuff. So I was very surprised when I started getting some of these gigs, like I think one month that paid my rent. Um, oh, wow. And, uh, That's really yeah. cool. And I was like, oh, this is okay, this is valuable work. Mm -hmm. I don't need to sit on a committee for free. You know what I mean? No. I need to be paid for this. Right. Absolutely. Um, But I, and I also get to do a lot more education too. Yeah. Because there are things that I miss too, because the way I grew up. So. Sure. um, It sounds like, I mean, maybe too, like during COVID, like you've, you found a way to navigate as well. I mean, given some of the realities and and it sounds like it's even bringing out like your strengths and your beauties that you you can provide to the community you know and i think you know that's something that i also want to point out is like in these times like some people become very recluse which is yeah that was what i did at first yeah and then you i mean it sounds though like your strengths are bubbling up and and now serving so many people and influencing so many people Thank you. I yeah. hope so. Um, yeah, it's just like, what's the use? The first two months, I didn't do shit. <laughs> the first two months, oh, yeah. I was like afraid to go outside. Yeah. I like, you know, I'd look out the, my blinds like, yeah. <laughs> is anyone out there? Me too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was I was scared to see even step off my property. On, and then I felt bad about it. And, and then I, I felt like I couldn't even go outside because my neighbors were in the backyard. I was like, forget it. Going back in, like, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> you go up the stairs and your neighbors are looking at it. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at my window? <laughs> no. Like, that was how I was. I was just like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, like I, love my, I love my neighbors. They're, they're actually pretty cool people. And Yeah. And I can, too. Yeah. And I can smell them. I can smell them like smoking weed one night. And I was like, if I can smell their weed, I can probably breathe their breath. <laughs> I got to go in. Yeah, this made us all, it's making us all like a little Looney Tunes. Like, yeah. Um, it's, it's wild. Um, yeah. And, and really, uh, but yeah, I want to get back to like, that was one of the things that maybe it made me realize was like, you know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of social anxiety and like mm. a lot of stubbornness about like, you know, like I can do it myself, which is always a lie. Um, you know. If, if you think you did it all yourself, you're fucking lying. Um, but like, <laughs> you know, um, but like, that was the thing that I realized was like, people are really important. Um, and so, they yeah, are. that's why I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm just like, I need to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and this is, it's great too, because 
I mean, just to even be able to talk about this, I feel like I never get the chance to. And so it feels like very messy and just like, I feel like not as sharp in my like skills to talk than I normally am. I feel like very like clumsy, if that makes sense. That's, that's me usually. Oh, (laughs) like all of my life. (laughs) Clumsy. Just very... (laughs) <laughs> easier to make some strange noise than actually say words um <laughs> i love it that's very cool well um i don't know is there anything else you want to add no you know i just again i think you know as we start to think like through community and and work like that you know i think you brought up something and that i think is i experienced myself too is i remember when um, I was younger and I was in, starting to get into the music scene here. Yeah. Um, I felt like I gave a lot and I don't know. I always felt like it didn't, it didn't return sometimes and that was fine. Um, but I remember listening to an interview with Smashing Pumpkins when I was like 18. It was like, <laughs> cause I was into them. And yeah, I don't remember what band member said this. He said, you know, you just need to create the world that you want, whatever you want it to be with your music and just create that world and and then start to invite people into it and if they want to come into it that's great and if they don't then they don't belong in your world but eventually they may come into your world but it's your world and I remember hearing that and I was like god that's so true because here I am trying to live in other people's worlds like I'm trying to live like with these like virtuoso like trumpeters and jazz musicians and I'm like I'm not like that and I'm also like not like these other group and I'm like I, I've worked so hard to try to fit in and yeah. get this like respect from these people when I'm like you all created your own worlds and here I am trying to get into yours and I don't even want to be in it you know <laughs> and so I think that's something else that I wanted to say like over the last 10 years is like I've just created my own little world and it's like if people want to come into it and be part of it that's fine um, but I'm no longer going to try to also um, try to fit into other people's boxes mm-hmm. in this community that have can alienate other musicians or community folk because yeah. they, they think it's an elite move and it's not yeah. it's very like it's very you know it creates issues yeah. and and it's it's hurt me it's hurt me a lot and it's something that I've learned to recover and I'm still recovering from it like questioning myself like am I am I really making true art and like I question that but it's I think the community of people that that coming in and out of my world is great and the ones that I'm in now their world I love their worlds and I'm, I'm honored to be part of their worlds but I think I've just learned that it's okay to navigate those worlds yeah uh, thanks for saying that I think that's I've definitely felt a lot of that and um there are always a couple of people come to mind for me who weren't like that um and um uh, like in in music you know mm-hmm. like um and I think that's why I do things the way I do like even with COVID Chronicles I think most people expect me to do this um with mostly writers you know because mm. um, that's mostly what I'm known for at this point in time and like um I mean there are so many people covering what the writers do and often we keep talking with the same writers over and over again sure but like that's the thing is like there are other things to learn not just in writing um that even us writers need to be thinking about you know sure um and in music it's just like yeah this is another message i wish i would have gotten sooner it's like you create the world that you want to create yeah you know and then go from there and um I just, I actually just recently read something that's very similar to that, like the way Amanda Palmer works. Uh-huh. Um, and um, Amanda Palmer is just Amanda Palmer. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and um, she's also very community oriented, like even mm-hmm. on social media and just like, like in a sense, like taking care of um, the folks that also are taking care of her and her bands, you know? Um, and I don't know, it was really cool reading, um, reading her book um, because she actually talked about that, about this very thing, creating your own community um, by just doing the stuff that you do in the world and Mm -hmm. um, people are going to dig it and they're going to show up for you um, and things like that, you know, um, like total strangers, like people you wouldn't think would show up. Sure. Um, And that's neat. That's really neat. 
And I think I've found that too. It's just like, I want to do this thing. And people show up, even if I don't have my shit together, (laughs) 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 which which has happened quite a few times. I'm like, oh, I'm not ready. Sorry, guys. Okay, bye. Yeah. (laughs) I do do have a confession because like, I got (laughs) to say this. I, and I'm glad maybe this is a space to say, but I've, uh, and I feel, well, I just got to say it. It's going to be fine. Um, <laughs> so those individuals that made me feel kind of outcasted early in my career, mm-hmm. I've actually invited to play with me and then I've mm-hmm. kind of flipped the script on them. Purposely. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean by flip the script? <laughs> where like, you know, like they'll say like, hey, come and sit in at this jam and they know that I'm going to fumble. Yeah. And like, and it's like almost kind of like a joke against me when I, oh. earlier in my career, yeah, they would like do something to like make me not like as sharp in the performance. And I knew I wasn't prepared to go play those gigs. And I think they did too. And it was kind of yeah. a joke. And um, so now like I've invited some of those folks to come and play with me, like in, in the spaces and worlds that I've lived in, like seven circle or like three Kings or yeah. I'm like, all right, can you hang in a punk venue? Yeah. Let's like, <laughs> we're going to do this thing now and let's see you show up because it's my world now. And I'm like, no, that's not what I wanted to sound like. Or I wanted it to be more, more punk. (laughs) punk. They're like, huh? I'm like, yeah, see exactly. (laughs) Not nice. Is it? (laughs) Yeah. And uh, I feel bad because that's kind of retaliatory, but I, I, it felt kind of good though. Yeah. (laughs) I try not to be retaliatory. I, I, I've definitely had my moments. I think I got that out mostly in my twenties and early thirties. Oh. I think, I hope. Now I feel bad. Yeah. Oh no, don't feel bad. <laughs> That's just, I just like, I just don't have the energy and headspace for it. You know, yeah. like, um, it's just, um, to hold on to that stuff, to hold on to anything really anymore. It's like shitty stuff happens and we all get to be whole people. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, I like it's that. not, you know, there there are some some things but like it's I like I like the idea of like what can I do instead and that's um I like making a broader opening or a broader ripple and so it's more interesting to me to you know like what do I want to create today like what do I want to see in the world um because this other stuff like yeah. It gets me down to the point where it's debilitating um, and I don't know how much time I have, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, maybe as, it's like a whole, like as humans, like how much time we have. And I think that can be multiple things. Like how much time do we have in like this space? How much time do we have um, post this? Like right. living is, is changing. I think just what living means. Mm-hmm. it's changing especially with technology like people are still living on even though they've been dead for a long time because of yeah. technology like i still have cousins getting tagged in posts on facebook that have been dead for years shit you know yeah, what I mean? that so it's like kind of blows my mind a little bit yeah i get um i just got an update um from someone yesterday everyone tagging on some of the posts we were all tagged in and um they've been gone for a while Mm-hmm. that's it's always a little weird you know it's like little right. this is what the actual ghost in the machine looks like <laughs> yes um, it's ghost like in the, <laughs> ghost in the machine i like that yeah I'll write that down where'd you it's, get that um, uh i mean there's an anime thing and i think it's an idiom or something i don't know is it? or so, maybe not an idiom but like yeah i didn't come up with it i didn't make it up <laughs> i wish i did are you sure because that's really hip I really like yeah that. i didn't i didn't make it up <laughs> oh man ghost in the machine british philosopher gilbert okay i'm just sorry i'm writing it down okay <laughs> i'll read about it later that's inspiring the way you yeah anyways um well, no but uh, yeah anyways yeah i i mean i get that um i just i unfortunately for me i didn't i didn't necessarily have the support to like help me continue and i didn't have um enough of the Taurus side of me I wasn't like um you know um strong-willed enough to be like fuck all of you and get out of my way you know what I mean I was just like I let it really get me down and I was like well maybe I'm a hack or maybe Mm. I'm not supposed to do this and so like actually I haven't been really making music for about seven years really Um, mm -hmm. oh my god I haven't 
um i just like i just was like okay i'm i guess i'm not doing this um so like um i don't know i don't know what life's going to look like people ask me to sing things here and there mm -hmm. um and my voice is changing and um all those kinds of things so sure. i don't know i don't know I think you bring up a good point. I don't know if I would have had the courage to to create my world or to have that feeling if it wasn't for people like Caitlin Heffernan or yeah. Greg Jimba. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say those two because they're like my sister and my brother. Yeah. Because they're when real I met, good. They're good, <laughs> they're good people. <laughs> they're good people and they've inspired me to be the best person. Mm -hmm. um, because I remember when I first met Greg, he was like, and he opened up unity and I was like, this is cool. Like you can be yourself here and yeah, I'll be judging you. And I was like, God, I really love the space that you all have created. And that was a quick, cool space. Yeah. And quickly we all became brothers and sisters of each other. And, um, and I think it's through their, like their tenacity and will and creativity that yeah. that's, I, I feed off of them. Like, yeah. They, they actually like provide so much hope and love inside of me. And I think without them, it's like, it wouldn't exist because they've opened me up to other groups. They're like, well, check this out, check this out. Check this. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and then I'm like, wow, like I love this world. Like I'm in yeah. your world and I just want to be part of it now. And so, you know, over the last decade with both of them, it's, I'm so lucky to, yeah. you know, and as I said before, like I started with saying family, like as an identity and, yeah. those two are family to me yeah you know, for sure like i they are my sister and my brother for sure that's awesome yeah. i love that yeah. um yeah that's great and i'm glad i'm glad that happened happened for you and i think like i said i'm like i'm feeling that's starting to happen for me um especially in the writing community and a little bit in art too um mm. like there's definitely some folks who are just like <sighs> they know some of my shit <laughs> like they know some of my stuff um and they've been really um supportive and like um you know um just good people in my life like the bed in the other room m one of my old professors gave it to me um, uh -huh. <laughs> um and i i just i'm attached to it because um because of that um gesture you know it was just like at the time i think i was sleeping on a freaking I was sleeping on the floor and then I was sleeping on like this um, really terrible futon, um, which was worse actually than sleeping on the floor. And then she brought me this little single bed um, that, that she just wasn't using. And uh -huh. um, obviously someone has become very dear to me, um, kind yeah. of like my adopted moms. So like technically I should get a new bed because it's a little worn <laughs> out because it's been like a really long time, yeah. like 12, 12, 14 years or something that I've been sleeping <laughs> on this thing. But like, um, yeah, it was just like, you know, not everyone does stuff like that for you. I'm even, even if they have it. And um, so it's just like, like I said, you know, before, like um, early on when I first moved to Denver, I was like, I can do it myself. And um, yeah. that's always a lie. I've, yeah. there's, there's been an angel there almost every step of the way. Oh, um, sure. I've been pretty lucky. Yeah. So yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah. how, how, who was this individual? Um, one of my old professors. Oh, it was an um, old professor. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sandra Mareshto. Um, uh -huh. She's become a real good friend. Um, oh, wow. And yells at me sometimes. <laughs> um, because, you know, she's one of my adopted moms. So that's why yeah. I got my MFA, too. She, like, okay. I used to have these little parties. It was, uh -huh. like, I call them non sequitur exquisite corpse parties uh -huh. where folks would come in we'd mill about and eat and stuff and talk and then we'd sit down in my friend's garden and we'd write these um kind of improv poems and mm -hmm. um it's one of my favorite things you'd like yeah each person's writing a line but no one knows what the lines are and at the end you read the whole thing and usually it works usually oh, it's something really amazing that's <laughs> yeah. so cool and and so i would do that and at this one particular one, um, we'd all gone inside and she just in, got, waited till everyone got in the room. Yeah. Just like a good mom does, right? <laughs> yeah. Waited till everyone got in the room and she's like, when are you getting your MFA? And I was just like, ah, what? Oh, whoa. <laughs> what, what if you I don't just... want to though? Like, <laughs> Girl, why are you doing this right now? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, that's so, so cool though. I, yeah. I think about people like that in my life, like Ron Miles has mm -hmm. always been that way with me. Uh, Fred Hess was, you know, yeah. rest his soul. He was, uh, he was one of those people that created his own world. Ron does the same thing and, yeah. you know, 
and just so giving and loving like that. I remember Ron was like, when I first transferred to Metro, he was like, if you need to sleep on my couch, you can. I'm like, well, oh, yeah. my God, what? Like, you, you just met you? me. You just <laughs> met me five minutes ago and you just let me, you're going to let me move in? You have kids? <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Those are uh, shooting comets. Yeah. They're good people. Yeah. Ron's always one of the people I think of who's always been kind in the music community. Mm -hmm. um, Hazel Miller. Oh, yeah. Hazel's um, great, too. Uh, Chris Pro Prokesh. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. really great. Um, Christian Teal, really mm. beautiful human. Um, mm -hmm. And there are others, too, but those are the first ones that come to mind. Oh, yeah, for sure. Those are good yeah. ones. Every time I talked with them, they were always very kind. And and even if they were pressed, they were open. You know what I mean? Yes, um, yes. So it's yeah. really good to – I'm glad people like them exist. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> And it makes you want to pay it forward when you can. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, how can people keep up with your work and oh. support your work? Yeah. Um, just joshuatrinidad.com. Everything's there. I mean, linked yeah. to everything else in the world. So, yeah, I think that's a good place to find it. Cool. Um, anything else you wanted to say? No. Thank you so much for having me here. This has been really, yeah. really cool. Really, really cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and close it up then. Great.